Jay. Hey, 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 hey. Here's Sorry, I know it's right before the game. No, it's all good. What's up? Uh, okay, so here's the deal really quick. We've mm -hmm. got a bunch of people in the audience that we paid to take video of you and put it up on social. Take video of me for it. Okay, so here's the pitch. Totally don't have to do it if you don't want to. It's easy. But all you would have to do is put on this hat, make a half court shot during the shoot around. We'll put it up on social and you can pay. You easy paid. money. I get paid to do that? Yeah. Yeah, just make a half court shot in the hat. You get paid. Half court. Yeah. Hmm. For you guys, I'll do it. Yeah! yeah. There you go. Give me the hat. Let's All do right. this. In the hat. Half All court. Right. My guy. Got you. All right. Good All game. Right. Good game. Love that dude. If you're looking for tickets to any upcoming Mystic games, visit the ticket booth on our team website for availability. The view of downtown Detroit is seen from the riverfront on a beautiful day here in the Motor City. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to 2K Sports. We've got some NBA action for you coming up. I'm Kevin Harlan, joined by the talented analyst tandem of Greg Anthony and Chris Weber. David Aldridge is on our sideline. A moment now to check out who's leading in the all-star voting. And a lot of fans and players interested to see how this thing all turns out. Take a look at Drummond. He's there in the top ten in the Eastern Conference voting. The fans have really gotten behind him. And that's the way it should be. Kevin, you could make a case that he should be a starter. But there are just so many great players in the East. Just being in the top ten shows how much respect the fans And as things get ready to roll, let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's on the sideline. David? Well, guys, for all of the star power of Blake Griffin. Yeah, and he has their confidence. David, thank you. Big conference rivalry tonight, Chris. Think back to some of your legendary bouts between, say, your, your Sacramento team and the L.A. Lakers. Oh, man, my ears are ringing right now. I got, I got, car, I got the, the cowbells ringing in my ears just from, from you saying that. But Pretty it, exciting, it takes, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, man, it was awesome. But it, it's not just another game. The pride is involved. In it. It's about the standings in the conference. And also, it's about fan bragging rights. So for us, you know, it was like the Battle of California. We wanted people in Sacramento to be able to walk around in L.A. and say, hey, we're the best right now. Now let's take a look at the Bulls' opening lineup. Levine at the two with Porter at the three. Markinen and Carter are up front, and it's B in at the point guard. And for Detroit, on the wings, Kennard and Snell. B. On the front line, the talented duo of Griffin and Drummond. And it's Rose in at the point. Passes to Griffin. Over to the left wing. Here's Kennard. Started by Levine, five on the clock. That shot by Griffin, no good. Fast break, here comes Chicago. Here's B, and out of bounds. The Pistons will take it. Here's Rose. He's coming off a 16-point game against Cleveland. Snell, the pass to Kennard. to Griffin. Five to shoot. Fires for three. Porter pulls it in. Right side Levine. Fades and shoots. And that one is good. Okay. The incredible handles on display. I see you Levine. He's so sensational at creating for himself. Here's Rose. It loose, stolen by Markinen. Fires from 14. They get it again. A nice shot by Carter. Oh, he's just such a terrific offensive rebound. I mean, Carter Jr. excels at using his big body to his advantage on the glass. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Back to Rose. Now on the scoring column with that bucket. One for two this game. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Yeah, very little resistance. I mean, you had to bring much faster help than that. B, true on the 14-footer. B's got his second bucket of the night. 
And hitting the mid-range jumper here early gives the defense just another thing to think about. Well, that's something that they scouted him coming into tonight. They know he can make this shot. That's a poor effort defensively. And see Webb, you talk to the Bulls fans, and they are eager for a return to greatness. Yeah, GA, it's been a long time since the Jordan era, and Bulls fans know. But you know, GA, the Bulls have a very loyal group of fans. Their patience has been tested, though, but this team needs results. So it's the Pistons now. They trail by six. Here's Snell, guarded by Porter. Here's Kanar. Well, the offense is sputtering a bit here, starting to fall behind. Yeah, Kevin, he's a phenomenal rebounder. You almost need two players to box out Drummond. Outside, Levine. Pass to Porter. High post shot. No good from B. Well, I thought that one was going to go down. The mid-range jumpers. Oh, man, that's usually a bunny with the deep playing soft like that. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on B. That's foul number two for him. The Bulls making a switch here. White's checked in. First quarter of action. Just under three and a half minutes played. He's checked in for Luke Kanaan. So Chicago going with an almost entirely new group here. Thaddeus Young, he's checked in for Markinen. Murray comes in for Otto Porter Jr. He's checked in for Zach Levine. And Chris Dunn subbed in for White. And a major strength of this Pistons team in recent years has been their rebound. The whole team contributes, but a big part of that is drama. I mean, has only been emphasized more uh, since Dwayne Casey has come in. A very tough team to deal with on the glass. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going. So for Chicago right now, Young and Carter are the big men in John. Be out there with Chris Dunn. And it's Murray in at the three slot. Chicago leading by 17. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin. B in that last game against the Pacers was terrific. He ended up with 21 points, and as we've come to expect from him, spent a lot of time at the foul line. Another outstanding outing, something that's become more and more commonplace for him. Bring it back to you, Kevin. Excellent, David. Yeah, he was very assertive in that last game, making things happen. Absolutely made his presence felt, and I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to get it going early here tonight. Uh, bottom line, though, he, he's a pro. He understands his strength, and, and he knows how to play to them. Puts up a three. That's in. Coming off an assist from Dunn. That's seven points for B. What unselfishness from the young guard, uh, Dunn. Uh, he, he's making more of an effort to, to distribute the ball. Rose finds Griffin. Young with the steal. Murray with it. And Rose picks him up defensively. And it's Murray with the jam. That's a double whammy, guys. <laughs> That's right. A great defensive play, then the emphatic stuff. Oh, yeah. Bang, bang. An impressive sequence that has them fired up. Young against Rose. And there's the pass to Snell. Drummond trying to get himself free. Snell, no good. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Here's B. And that one is off. Some solid defense from Brown. Here's Snell, defended by Carter. To the middle, here's Rose, and the layup's good off the glass. Rose has got his second bucket. And you love to see Rose aggressively looking to score on the inside. Here's B. Griffin with some nice D. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. Here's Snell. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring yet from him. Here's Truman. The kick out to Brown. Down to five on the shot clock. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Drummond. 
And a quick look here at some of the numbers for Griffin. And guys, this effective field goal percentage is trending in the wrong direction over the past five games. Shot discipline hasn't been the best. They'll be looking to play a smarter game tonight. Time called here. The Bulls decide to talk it over. Their last encounter was in Detroit where they were able to handle the Pistons. In the last meeting of these two teams, they were really sharp defensively, disrupting the flow of their offense and causing a ton of turnovers. And that's what led them to a blowout win. Offensively, they were solid, but their defense was what really carried them. Catching up on the changes for Chicago. Valentine's checked in for Murray. And Zedaransky subbed in for Chris Dunn. Passes it to Snell. Oh, and there's the one-handed jam. And he just elevates and powers in the one-handed. Mm -hmm. Textbook. Last outing for the Bulls, it was a loss to Indiana. Well, well yeah, and, and Andre Drummond is the epitome and, and maybe the last of the traditional center. And with that said, it hasn't been easy to find a match for him in the post. But Blake Griffin might have changed all that. B, he's covered by Brown. Here's B. Gets the three-pointer to fall. B's got ten. Uh, unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct, just fanning the flame. Oh, yeah, and that's what you love about him. He shows no mercy, even with a comfortable lead. Rose can't hit. And Chris, as you said, Griffin and Drummond work well together. Oh, they do, Kevin. The two make up for each other's weaknesses and, and complement each other's strengths. I mean, Drummond has been playing with confidence, having some of the best games since Blake has come over in the trade. Looking at who's out there now for the Pistons. Morris is checked in for Andre Drummond. Christian Wood comes in for Blake Griffin. Kennard, he's checked in for Tony Snell. And Langston Galloway subbed in for Bruce Brown. Galloway, no good. Or right, even for a player who's not a three-point specialist, I mean that's a shot you got. To Look at that! Oh, got to give Levine some love. Many of the dunks he pulls off are just flat-out nasty. And so it's Rose bringing it up for Detroit. Following this one, they get to host the Pelicans. That game will conclude a three-game homestand. Morris passes to Kennard. Will it go? Up again. Great positioning on the putback. And those second chance points really become almost like bonus points when you can get them. B, he's covered by Rhodes. Here's B. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. And Coach Jim Boylan agreeing to a multi-year extension with the Bulls this summer, Greg. And taking that interim tag off his title as head coach, Boylan, with over 30 years of coaching experience, afforded the opportunity to continue developing this young core. White, he's checked in for the Bulls. Kennard, the pass to Morris. The kick out to Rose. Detroit needs to get off a shot. Galloway, no good. The Bulls leading by 22. Here's White. No good on the three. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on beat. That's his third foul of the game. Antonio Blakeney's checked in for B. White looking around from downtown, and the last second attempt doesn't fall. And so it's the Chicago Bulls finishing the quarter up by a whopping 24 points. And it's been their rugged defense setting the tone. Back right after this. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. You have to like what we're seeing from B. 
Kentucky. And how about the amount he's contributing in the scoring column through two quarters? He has been terrific. Yeah, Greg, this game has his fingerprints all over it. Now looking to replicate what he did in the first half. At the forward positions, Snell and Griffin. Rose is out there with Kennard, and it's Drummond in at the five, roaming the paint. That's the group for Detroit right now. Injuries can play such a big part in a player's career. Which guys strike you, Chris, as the biggest what-if stories? Have they stayed healthy? Wow. I mean, you got to start, in my mind, I, I got to go to, you know, a guy like a Grant Hill. Uh, he was Mr. Triple Double. You know, you know, he and Jason Kidd, to me, were almost the same players, just in different bodies. Uh, when Grant started his career off in Detroit, we see him uh, get injured. Uh, man, that just that just hurt me because he had so much potential. Even though he had a great career, I, I still think about him. How about Greg Oden, who got hurt in his yes. senior year, had yes. to shoot free throws with his left hand, and then he comes into the league, and the big fella uh, would just had to battle injuries and feel sorry for that big fella because he was so skilled in the game. And keep Keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, in Blake Griffin, the Pistons have their biggest star in years, probably going back to their championship team of 2004. A return to all-star form for Blake meant tremendous individual numbers last season. The Pistons hadn't won a playoff game in more than a decade. It's still not the result they want in 2019. The Pistons will be trying to capitalize during Blake's prime. Kevin, we'll see where this franchise goes from here. Oh, take a break. He sure will, take David, but he's a terrific player. Thank you so much. He's off on the first. And, Chris, just how special was it to play for Detroit in your career? What relationship does this team have with their fans? Yeah, it was so special. I mean, uh, being able to go home uh, to the house that I grew up in or to where my parents lived and and, and be able to go to the Pistons practice and to be part of it, to put on that jersey. It was so special, man. This team is a mainstay of the city. I mean, you feel like you can lift up the whole city when you play for the Pistons. Uh, it, it was such a special part of my career. B, who's covered by Rhodes. Shot clock at six. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul, shot misses. He'll be shooting two. Yeah, the defender all over him. He hits the second from the line. Third quarter of basketball, we're about a minute and a half in. Pass to Kennard. And here's Griffin. Outside Rose puts it up from 12. Count it, number five from the four this game. He's now five of 11. And Rose always looking for his offense, and, and why not? He can put up points in a hurry. Inside, B, that's good, and it's Levine with the assist. And it's now 22 points for B. And no matter what they've tried, the D just has not been able to deny them the ball inside. Griffin dishes to Rose. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. It's going to go on Otto Porter Jr. And Derrick Rose, the former number one overall pick in 08, one of the most athletically gifted point guards the league has ever seen. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. Shooting two. The free throw drops for Rose. Free throw good, Levine. I mean, and when you think of Levine, I mean, his dunking ability comes to mind. I mean, he's proven uh, to be an elite poster maker. Here's Rose. The teardrop falls in. Rose has got nine points here in the second half. Shots are just flowing for him right now, having a really strong quarter. They swipe it. There's 39 seconds left in the third. Wood passes to Rose. Shot. 
Six to shoot. Three pointer. And it's Chicago with the rebound. Porter's got his fourth rebound in this one. No good from B. Now Rose. 15 points in the game. Porter with the steal. Two on one as they jump out on the break. White wide open. He fires. The three pointer, no good. And so it's Chicago. Rolling along with a 27 point lead as we wrap up the quarter. And they're winning the turnover battle very easily in this one. We'll take a quick break and then back to the action here. And it's time now to bring you our State Farm assist of the game. Yeah, an easy choice tonight. Look at the precision on this pass. Put it on a platter for him. Yeah, he put it on a platter, and it was served cold. Now, I love the poise, the decisiveness. This is how you run it off. And there may not be a lot of drama down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter, but stranger things have happened. Taking a look at the Bulls. We've got Larry. Zach Levine is out there with B. Then it's Otto Porter Jr. And it's Felicio in its center. Yeah, easy call. The creation of the super teams, Chris, is enough being done to ensure a competitive balance in the NBA. Uh, I think so. I, I think that every year we're going to have to evolve in trying to do enough and to see what happened the previous year. But, but yeah, and, and the fact remains, though, Kevin, is, you know, uh, I like working with you. You're my friend. I would go work with you. And in basketball, you want to go play with your friends. Same so stuff, yeah. how do you stop that? Right. I don't know <laughs> when guys get to hang out in the summer and say, wouldn't it be cool if we got to play together, our kids would play together? Together, we could win one. That's going to be hard to deter. So uh, I, I just think it's about how strong the will of the friends are, and, and more importantly, what is the league doing to kind of uh, not necessarily give as much incentive to do that. But I think the league is doing a great job staying proactive, giving guys a lot of incentive, a lot of reason, a lot of dinero to stay at home <laughs> with the team. And Morris drops them both. And I just love the skill set that Markeith Morris has, Greg, at that forward position. He really is a do-it-all type of forward for this team. Can step outside and shoot, but has no problem guarding anyone on the front line of the opposition. It's only a matter of time until his three-point shot comes back to him. I mean, he knocked down two threes before halftime. Nothing so far here in the second. Valentine's checked in for the Bulls. Piston shooting just 39% from the field, struggling to find that net. Maker kicks to Frazier. And yes, it's good. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. B, Frazier covering. The shot's good from B. And even with the big lead, he remains focused on the task at hand. We talk about killer instinct all the time. He definitely has it. He's keeping his foot on the pedal here. Up top, Morris. Kicks it to Maker. Six on the shot clock. Nice ball booming by Detroit. Here's Frazier. And the three off target. The Bulls shooting straight 49% from the field. And with the likely return of prep to pro prospects, Chris, some have argued for a high school combine to help determine who's ready to make the leap and who isn't. Uh, I'm not really there with the high school combine. I, I still think that, you know, you still have a, a level of college or a level of professionalism that can happen after. And I, I don't believe until you're ready to be evaluated for the pros immediately uh, should you have that combine. Uh, you know, your bodies are still growing. I, I talked to Jaron Jackson just yesterday, and he told me that he grew two inches over last summer. So mm. uh, I think it's a little unfair to judge these guys that early when their bodies uh, and mentality he still, still has a lot of development left. B, Frazier covering. From past the arc. No good from B. Enzo Thomas will bring it up for the Pistons. Moment here now for an injury report. Let's check in with our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge, for an injury update on Thomas Sadoransky. David. Thanks, Kevin. I just talked with Chicago's head athletic trainer. He's calling it a high ankle sprain, and he told me that he's currently in extreme pain. 
he's definitely going to be sitting the rest of this one out and potentially a significantly longer time before he'll be back on the court. Kevin, really, really bad news tonight. Thanks for the status report there, David. At least we now know, uh, Greg, how he's doing. Yeah, when, when you talk injury, the unknown factor is always a difficult thing to deal with. Yeah, but fortunately, we know he's in good hands. So you hope to see him back on the court soon. On the wing, Morris. Goes up on the block. The second chance effort, and that's two points on the layup. Wow. Morris is a physical guy. Solid is staying active on the boards and gobbling up these rebounds. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. And a chance now to look at the schedule for the Bulls. On Monday, they'll be matching up against Gordon Hayward and the Boston Celtics. And then on Wednesday, they'll go up against Bradley Beal and the Washington Wizards. And for the matchup with the Sixers, it's going to be a battle for this group. You get the feeling they'll need to be at their sharpest if they want to come away with a victory. Andre Drummond's checked in for Detroit. As it seems like some teams have been in rebuild mode for a long time. Is there a point at which the league should step in? Five seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. And so Chicago takes this one, and by a big margin. This crowd was stunned by the manner in which their team was dismantled. You know what? Shocking. I don't care what the matchup is. You never expect a road team to come in and just cruise to the kind of win they did tonight. 